Hello and welcome to this week's RuneScape news and before I get into the video I do want to warn you the majority of this video may come across as negative. I'm saying this at the start because every time I even make the slightest observation of something I think is not going as well as it should, people say I'm always super negative about Jagex. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. I went on scuba holiday to the Canary Islands near the end of March with the idea that nothing interesting would be shared, but oh boy was I wrong. And I do intend to cover it now as it's something you absolutely need to know about. Perhaps the most important thing to talk about is Mod Keeper's new message. This message was shared on the 26th of March and and is essentially a look ahead up until June, which is near the summer holidays for most people. This message is essentially our roadmap, and unfortunately, we aren't getting more than this anytime soon. This wall of text has a lot of words that I'm not going to read to you because it's a lot of we're reshaping how we work and we're using more player feedback, and while it does seem like we are getting more looks, into development than earlier this year, this isn't exactly the most exciting thing to hear from the executive producer of RuneScape. So what is exciting to know about? Well, April will be getting a new quest called Requiem for a Dragon. This quest will be arriving somewhere in the third or fourth week of April, and they don't want to spoil too much just yet, but we should expect to see familiar faces and foes. But as a spaceball warrior, it's a lot more interesting to see an unlikely encounter and an emerging threat that looms over mysterious ruins. Something about this sentence makes me believe that this quest will add some form of new combat content in either the form of Slayer creatures or a replayable wave-by-wave -wave thing, just like the Ancient Awakening quest. And that's pretty much where the content ends for this uh, message slash... We, we call it a roadmap. I know Jagex doesn't see this as a roadmap, but this is effectively the only thing we are getting about upcoming content, so this is our roadmap. In May, we'll be seeing a bunch of community-driven, so feedback-driven patches and changes, and these are important, but not a replacement for actual content. Remember that. It's not a replacement for actual content. Additionally, we'll be seeing a graphical rework to Relica, which is also nice to see that they're still working on updating RuneScape to turn it more into a one runescape june does have something exciting there which is a brand new summer event and based on jagex's recent track record with events think christmas 2023 or the recent easter event i have a lot of faith in jagex being able to deliver something exciting and fresh feeling compared to seeing another beach event because the beach event while loved by many especially for the dungeoneering hall is getting a little bit old now so essentially this post summarized in short is we'll be getting a brand new quest graphical update, and a new summer event in the coming three months. When I first read this post on my holiday, I tweeted out this message, and that message is still as relevant as it was a week ago. I get that if you're a player that is just starting out, or you're like a mid-game player, there's so much stuff for you to do, but for us high-level players, content creators, because I'm both a player and content creator, there have been much juicier times to be playing and creating content on this game, and right now, it's not looking too juicy. What I did really like, and unfortunately wasn't able to cover either, was the April Fool's event, which did in fact end today. RuneScape added the bench setting skill as a sort of meme, and you can get level 99 in like 15 minutes and get this skill cape. And thanks to RuneScape Mobile, I was able to get it during my holiday, so I'm happy I did. This is going to be one of those cool little collectible items. In other news, the RuneScape forums officially shut down on the 28th of March, so other than backups, you will no longer be able to physically read old forum posts. Another thing that happened when I was away is that all RuneFest tickets were sold out in less than five minutes. So if you're planning to get one, you know, maybe like, oh, I'm 50 minutes out of work, I'm going to go check. Yeah, no chance. There were people buying up tons of tickets with the intention, at least that's the impression I'm getting here, of reselling them for higher price later down the line. And for that reason, someone like Mod Mark going absolute Chad mode tweeted out this saying, I will personally be hunting down all RuneFest ticket touts and cancelling all their bought tickets. It's unscrupulous and Jagex won't stand for it. I say people, but it may very well be a single individual or a couple of individuals that are buying up tickets to resell later down the line. Mod Mark mentioned only a small number of total tickets being illegally resold. In terms of news from this week, so actual this week in RuneScape, 
Well, there isn't that much to talk about, unfortunately. There's some kind of recolor Jack Track outfit bundle, which... Uh, <laughs> I'm not really sure what to say here, but I personally wouldn't be spending money on this. Yes, you get some Rune Coins and Treasure Hunter Keys and some XP Boosters, but this... <laughs> It's not really worth it. In terms of actual changes, there's one thing definitely worth talking about, and that is a brand new ritual called Manifest Ectoplasm. This ritual requiring level 95 necromancy is the way to get ectoplasm quickly, which is mainly important for Iron Man players as they're not able to buy ectoplasm from the Grand Exchange. The ectoplasm output can, of course, be increased by using alteration glyphs. The input for this ritual are buckets of slime, which are an untradeable item you can obtain by going to the slime pool, which you can get to by using your ectophile teleport, or perhaps some retaining your legs too or better. You can get about 2100 to 2200 buckets of slime per hour if you're using magic notepaper, which I highly suggest doing. And it's also worth noting that you do not need actual physical buckets. You can simply click on the pool wait for it to fill up your inventory, then use the slime on the notepaper, not the other way around, otherwise it won't work. And that's the fastest way to collect a bunch of buckets of slime. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it interesting. If you did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. And if you haven't already, be sure to follow me on all my socials like Twitter and Instagram, linked below. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.